<laughs> but this is from the British intelligence about 1945. The Americans sort of nabbed all the rocket secrets for <laughs> after the war from Germany, yeah. and yeah. we went after Hona. Uh, <laughs> after the harmonicas. Went after, went after harmonicas. <laughs> that uh, sums us up. Okay, we are heading to something that is one of a kind. So, John is making whole harmonicas from scratch. The Great British Harmonica Company. So, there are customizers, quite a lot of customizers these days, who will take a harmonica that, that you have and kind of pimp it up, if you like. But this this is a lot more than that, isn't it? You're you're doing everything. You're building the harmonica from scratch, right? Yeah. So I I've had a workshop um, for thirty years where I made parts for musical instruments and harmonicas, and um, you can see here these are some uh, some combs. This is my CNC machine, um, and I was sort of making combs for people, and I was also making. Um, Cover plates. So here's a tool that I made. So, so I'll make these tools. Um, I am a tool maker by trade. Um, this is a this is a, a machine, um, a press tool that punches out cover plates. So mm. I make the actual tool themselves. I buy um, the sort of the tool set here, which is this. You can buy these online with nothing inside. And then with all this equipment here, I make the tool. Um, I draw it first of all on on SketchUp or a software, and then I machine the punches and I can make any shaped punch and I was making some cover plates um, and then someone said to me you know what you make so much of the harmonica you make reeds for for museums in America different shapes of reeds you make combs for people you're making cover plates why don't you make a harmonica um, and I thought yeah you know what I'm gonna this year I put it off for years four years five years <laughs> And then someone said, you need, you need to make it. So I said, okay, I'm going to make it. And this is the year where I've started to tool up now um, to start making um, making a, a complete harmonica. When I say a complete harmonica, really the heart of it is the reeds and the reed plate. Yeah. So pre pretty much anybody, and you see them online, anyone can sort of make a cover plate out of wood or you can make it out of silver. Mm. Um, and a comb, you don't need too much. You know, you can just sort of machine it from some wood. But the reed and the reed plate, that's the killer dealer. That's what yeah. sorts them in from the boys. And that's why there are no sort of artisan handmade harmonicas in the world. Um, no one hand makes a harmonica from start to finish unless you're one of the big boys, whether you're Hona, Kongsheng, Suzuki. Yeah. Um, because you need this lot. You need this lot. And you ain't got to just buy the tools. You've then got to design the tools and make the tools to get the part out. Yeah. So it's not really as simple as um, just saying, um, you know, I'm gonna just I'm gonna buy some tools and make it. Um, I wanted to make it all because I wanted it to be the Great British Harmonica Company. I wanted it to be 100%. Um, and so I started buying and looking at tools. Um, and I used I've been to to Germany to Klingenthal and I've been to the harmonica museums there and I've seen the old equipment of how they made. Uh, harmonicas back in the day yeah. we're talking 1890 um, and I photographed the machines I started coming back home and I was drawing them up and I said okay I've got an idea how I'm going to make it now I've got to look for machines that can that I can convert to, to, to that process because machines have gone on now yeah. the new machines have got a laptop and they've got a CNC machine but I wanted to do it the old way with a piece of brass and a milling cutter and we machine mm -hmm. it. And so I started looking online and I started coming across old machines that were in farm buildings and being derelict. Um, and I bought them and this is one of them. This is a Pratt & Whitney about a 1910 um, horizontal mill. I bought that and I'm just tooling that up at the moment and we're gonna use that for profiling the reeds. Um, this machine here um, is a very old um, British machine, um, a superior um, uh, grinding machine that I've just finished. It's got some really neat little uh, retro looking oilers <coughs> on the top there. Look at yeah. that. Uh, so I've just finished this machine <coughs> and I'm going to be using this to make the tools. And when I say make the reeds, um, we're going to be stamping them out. I've got the press tools here, we're going to be punching them out. Um, this is a, about a two and a half ton press. Mm. 
and I'm going to be stamping the reeds out and then we're going to be putting them on reed plates. Um, there's a new, couple of processes that I'm not going to tell you too much about um, at this stage because we've all got to have our secrets. Because <laughs> I do want to make um, the reed plate and the reed um, how they made it in the old days. Mm. And, and there is documentation that says the old way they made it um, was a little bit better than the new way they make it. Yeah. Why, do, you know, why do reeds keep breaking? Um, and and that sort of thing, and so I want to sort of investigate the old process of making mm. them by hand. We're going to hammer form them, um, and that's what we're going to do. So this place here, um, I come in, um, I just get the tools. Anyone who's seen a tool room, this is nothing new, but um, these are all the parts. I do some very poor drawings. I don't go on. A, I don't work on a on a drawing table. You'll see that uh, any scrap of paper. <laughs> Anyone who's in a tour room will see any scrap of paper is good enough. Um, so that's how I do it. I'm working at the moment on a cropping machine, a little cropping. Uh, that's, that's today's job. Um, so gonna, what's that going to do? This is going to, so when you make a reed, you machine the, um, the profile and then you crop it to size and mm. then you stamp the reed out. And this is going to be a little machine that's going to have these little um, micrometers on it. Because I need it to be adjustable. Yeah. One of the things that I want to do is I want to make a, um, the tool in that I can adjust the length and the width of the reeds yeah. um, for different tuning. So, yeah. that, so that's what I want to do. And obviously I still need to use these tools to uh, make reeds for harmonicas that are no longer made. Because I still do repairs for some collectors. Yeah. Um, I still need to make reeds for, for some of the harmonicas that are no longer made. So that's... Um, that's some of the stuff there. Um, yeah, that's about it. So that's uh, that's all the tools to make. This is this is everything here to make uh, a harmonica. Can you believe it? This is like we go to the Hona factory <laughs> and it's like a massive, massive place. But I think back in uh, the turn of the century, this was like you know the the uh, the size of a harmonica factory. I'm pretty sure this was this the size here. If you went to Klingenthal back in 1880. And people were making harmonicas. You know, there's probably what 50 harmonica makers in Klingenthal. Yeah. Um, about 1870, everybody was making harmonicas, and this is some of the stuff that they were using. So uh, that's it. One of the things that I'm hoping to do next year, uh, once it's all proven out, is maybe to run some courses where you come in maybe for three days. Yeah. Um, just maybe three, three or four people. Um, um, we just get a piece of wood, we get a piece of brass, and we actually make a diatonic harmonica. From scratch, wow. so that's going to be um, that. That's gonna, I'm obviously worried about uh, eye protection and people killing themselves <laughs> with the machine. <laughs> There's a few yeah. of those signs. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'd, I'd hate to turn around and see someone being <laughs> chewed up in yeah. this machine. But uh, so we're thinking about how we're going to do that. But if we can do a course mm. where people come along mm. and they make a diatonic harmonica from scratch with just a piece of wood and a sheet of brass, um, I think that's going to really show people. That um, you know, if everything goes wrong with their heart, not to sort of throw it away. Yeah. Because uh, at the moment, people seem to think that uh, it's a very sort of a throwaway um, instrument. Yeah. You know, they just buy another one. But yeah. if we can sort of change that and say, with my repairs as well, I sort of say to people, you know, it doesn't cost much to get them repaired. Yeah. And uh, you know, you're going to save a lot of trees. Yeah. So uh, so that's the plan. Yeah, good for the environment. And so, you said you you get local wood. British, oh, uh, so with, with regards yeah, to yeah. this, so when we launch these, what we're going to try and do is, um, first of all, we're, we're, we're making everything in the UK. We're going to yeah. be sourcing everything that we can. Uh, and one of the things that I want to try and do is I'm going to try and make the cones from British wood, something like um, English boxwood that mm -hmm. they used to make old recorders with, mm. and a lot of the folk instruments. Um, and so we're going to try and um, source um, sort of sustainable woods from, from the UK. So yeah. when you open your, the box with the Great British Harmonica Company in, there's going to be a sort of a certificate to say this wood was felled in the, the Queen's Estate, 1972, <laughs> yeah. and um, that's part of your harmonica. Wow. So yeah, so that's it. So this is, this is, this is how I look when I'm not, uh, <laughs> when I'm not uh, repairing harps. So what we got here, John? So this this is a, a document that um, that I got hold of. Not going to tell you how I got hold of it. <laughs> but this is uh, from the British Intelligence um, Subcommittee. This was um, a report put together about 1945, just after the war. Um, the British Intelligence Office sent um, two people 
to, to the Hona factory, a guy called Ch uh, Kenneth Chidley. Kenneth Chidley, by the way, was um, the works manager at the Whetstone factory that made concertinas. Oh. So, so they looked around and said, who's the expert that we can send? Yeah. Um, obviously, the, the, um, the Americans um, sort of nabbed all the rocket secrets for <laughs> after the war from Germany, yeah. Yeah. and we went after Hona. Um, <laughs> after the harmonicas. Went after, went after harmonicas. <laughs> that uh, sums us up. But one of the things that uh, this document does describe, one, it describes exactly how they made harmonicas and who was involved in making it. Mm. Um, so it lists down all the, um, the factories and the branches in the Trossingen mm. area. But right at the back here, um, they'd done some sketches of the machines that they used to make harmonicas. Um, and it's these sketches that, uh, with little hand drawings as well, these sketches that I used um, to, to design the equipment that I'm gonna be using. Wow. So if you look at this machine, this machine here will be this machine. And there's a milling cutter on here, which is gonna come out of here. This table here is this table. So it does only takes you know a, a little bit of design work to come up with the sort of tooling on the top, and then this machine will cut the um, the uh, will cut the profile of the reeds. Um, I already own this machine. This is the, the rivet machine. Oh, wow. So I've already got that. <laughs> I've already stolen that secret. Yeah, but, set, so, saved you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, how they punched out the reeds. Um, yeah. The other thing is that I also managed when I was researching for my little book on Julius Berthold. Julius Berthold made machine tools for making harmonicas. He is the key, the, the, probably the most influential person. If you haven't heard of Julius Berthold, the most influential person of the harmonica world. Mm. He, he changed pe from people making handmade harmonicas like I'm going to do mm. into a mass production, mass production market. And it was his machines that allowed Hona and Zydel to go from making a million harmonicas a year to making a hundred million a year. It was wow. like, he's, he's the guy. And I managed through my research to get hold of the original patents. This is a patent from 1888. Um, and I managed to get hold of the patents. Amazing. And so I'm using these original patents to develop the tools to make the great <laughs> British Harmonica Company. Wow. So we're going to be making them the old way. Amazing. So that's it. So that's uh, that. Hopefully, gives us a little bit of credibility. Uh, <laughs> I think I think people will believe you know what you're doing. So that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't wait to uh, to see and and hear what comes out of it. So, uh, so so can I. Look forward to it. All right. Well, thanks for coming <laughs> to uh, to the workshop. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks.